So hi everyone, today I'll be talking about three things we got wrong from Immortality and the three things that I think we will get wrong about Dune Uprising. So here we go. So the first thing on my list is this space on the board. This space called Conspire. So what is Conspire? Conspire is a space on the board where it's in, under the Emperor faction where you spend 4 spice, you get 1 influence in the Emperor track and you get 5 Solari, 2 troops and 1 intrigue card. So early on in um, in base game and X, I don't think this was one of the spaces where uh, people strive for. 4 spice was really a lot and then uh, you get 5 Solari which 5 Solari isn't enough for you to get a uh, Sword Master. 5 Solari is quite a fair bit but it's not enough for Sword Master. So what what has changed? Um, what has changed is that players just got better. So people realize that the first conflict that they reveal right it allows you to get uh, either Spice or Solari. So with Spice or Solari, right, you're able to um, get Sword Master using Conspire using two faction access. So let me just show you what what has happened. So previously, right, when people talk about Conspire, they said, oh, you know, I can always go to Wealth twice, which is one action. Wealth again, which is two actions. And then I need to draw my Diplo again and go to uh, Conspire. It's either that, right, or you you need um, more actions than that. You need to eat, go like Wealth, then Conspire. But in order for you to get a Spice for Conspire, you need to play uh, another faction access to still suit to get water in order for you to go to to, to great flat for you to go to conspire so it, it took a lot of actions for players to get to um, sword master tr using conspire uh, because of the high spice requirement and uh, and just the amount of faction access you need and you not always do have the faction access round three you sometimes you only draw it round four and so it is it's very slow and it requires so much investment so what has changed since then, people have realized that the first combat gives you either Spice or Solari and with a combination of Wealth or Steel Suits, right, you can only use two actions, whether it is Steel Suits Conspire with Solari in the combat or Wealth Conspire with Spice in the combat and that gets you your Sword Master round 2 or round 3. This is often assisted by someone else uh, providing dividends through the shipping track and then getting you one additional Solari. So this is something that we got wrong. I, I used to hate this spot. I don't, don't, don't know if you all know, like a lot of my early videos I said, oh, this is such a trash spot. Um, like, there's no point going here because it doesn't get you anything. Um, what we've come to realize, right, is that this spot is very good for other reasons as well. Um, in Immortality, troops are very limited. Like, you have one player shipping up and down who has troops, and then you have all other players who are putting in... All, two three troops round one and then their garrisons are empty after that so being able to restock your garrison to two troops right is is a very big deal uh and often can lead into some early conflict wins and the intrigue is always nice so conspire is the first thing that i think that a lot of us got wrong and i got wrong um yep so moving on to number two So the second thing on my list is these spaces, the Imperial Basin and the Haga Basin. So in the start of Immortality, right, I think when everyone came from Rise of X, the, the time at which you collected Spice at Imperial Basin was generally at a plus two bonus or Haga Basin at a plus two bonus as well. This is when when you play Dune the Desert Planet and you go to these spaces, I think that they were really good value. Like if you're going, like if you were just sending a troop uh, sending your agent there for like one spice bonus it felt very bad and i think it took very long for players to realize that uh you know if i spend a, send an experimentation to do in the desert planet when there's a one spice bonus this is a very good action so so if i let's say if i send my agent to do in the desert planet i get a research and i get two spice this is this is a very good action um and i think it took a lot of players quite a while to figure this out and this likewise is the same for Haga Basin. When there's a plus one spice bonus, actually it's not too bad. And when there's a plus two spice bonus at Haga Basin, it's a very good spot now. It used to be like a good spot, but now it's a very good spot. So it's so much so, right, that um, there are some players that are preferring to go to that are preferring to go to Imperial Basin 
even with a plus zero bonus compared to going to Arakeen, which gives you a troop and a card. So much so that this one research icon is so powerful because you have to play a, a certain amount of experimentations through the game and like just by moving along the track you get so many bonuses and you, there are a lot of other play styles that I think are enabled by moving down the track. So this is I think the, the second thing we got wrong and you might not think it as much but it does shape um, I think the weights of the spot right like how important are the spaces on the board um, does shape how the meta plays out. Right? It, like when you realize that these spots are good early on, like you can go there and other people don't realize it. And so um, I think because everyone realized it's, it's quite late, right? Then um, yeah, if, if you were one of the uh, people to realize it early, you will definitely have won more games than others. So this is, is, is number two on my list. The value of Imperial Basin and Haga Basin. So moving on to number three. So for number three, we have this card, Gola. This uh, is a it costs three Twilight Exu cubes. It's a blue graph card. This card has the same agent box as the other graph card. It has one persuasion and one sword on reveal. So the, the powerful thing about this card is the the on play effect. So this graph that it has copies the same agent box as the other grafted cards. Everyone looked at this card and thought it would be super broken with Mother Moheim with cards that were revealed like long reach. Yeah, people thought that would be really, really broken. And so much so that, uh, like, between this and Twilight Master, right, there were a lot of talks about having these two cards being banned, Gola and, and Twilight Master. I think Twilight Master still has some ground on, to stand on to say, like, no, maybe, maybe this card should be banned, and maybe this card is too powerful. But Gola is something that everyone rated, like, an S tier at the start. Uh, even I did. I, I moved it down uh, to, a, to a low B tier pretty quickly but um initially when i first looked at it i everyone everyone was rushing for this card so yeah i, I put it at a very high tier at the start and what i think players have realized right is that first of all cubes are precious and expensive the moment you spend three cubes you are at risk of not getting your first point right so if you spend three cubes and you don't get any value back somehow, there's a high likelihood that you missed out on this one point. So is buying a card worth giving up one point? Well, that depends, right? That depends on what you can combo it with. Um, so some cards you realize that, you know, if you combo it with some cards, it's just not good. Let's say if you combo it with something like other memory, what are you doing? You're drawing two cards. You're playing two cards to draw two cards. That's not very good, right? Or let's say you have something like uh, uh, Stitch Reverend Mother, right? If you you play together, you trash two cards. No, that's not great as well. And so what happens is that the the baseline for cards that you you want to play are um, becomes very very narrow. Uh, let's say if, if I play with a Python, right? I get to draw two intrigues. Is that amazing? Um, not really. Like two two intrigues is a lot, but at the same point in time, it also uh, puts you at risk of getting up to four intrigues and I mean, two intrigues is not game breaking anyway. Uh, things that are good are things like draw twos, right? Draw draw twos becomes draws four, right? You play two cards and you draw four, is good, but it's not insane. The the most powerful things you can have with it are probably things like um what was mentioned previously. You know, you can play Mother Mohaim, you can play maybe for humanity, but for humanity is great by itself, or you can play cards like um Gurney. Or long reach, right? Let's say Mother Moham, you make everyone discard four maybe, right? And or you or you play Gurney and you draw two and then you put in four troops. You no, know, and this is very strong. So like there are some combinations of cards which are very very good, like it requires two troops or two cards or something of that equivalent. But the amount of cards that are like that in the deck are not not too many. And so as such, you don't pick up Gurney early in the game because like you don't race for it because you need to have the other cards in your deck and you, you want at least like one or two uh, very good on play cards in order for you to buy Gurney. Um, good on play cards are also considered like scientific breakthrough. Probably this is the, the easiest and most powerful combination you can get off. Or things like um, Industrial Espionage, which you, when you buy Gola, you can always stack on top of your deck. 
um, probably like these are the most powerful cards you can probably get with Gola. But at the same point in time, it's not uh, S tier. It's not like S S tier that people were saying at the start. Um, yeah, so everyone got this card wrong. I can't imagine that people are talking about this card being banned. I think the, the amount of rules discussion that came out because of this card was so high at the start. And it was quite funny. Um, but I think when we first evaluated this card, this card seemed insane. But um, as time has has led us to understand that you know, this card is not broken and that this card is something that we were wrong about. So I guess rating cards is hard. Um, I think even when we read um, some of the Dune Uprising cards, uh, I, I think we'll get some of it wrong. So I think the this new seven cost experiment card, I'll go put a picture up. I, I I don't think I don't think it's very good, but maybe when you play it it'll be very good. So these are the type of things you'll see. Um there are some other cards which I think we've gotten wrong and that we rated too highly or too low. I'll kinda of put a list uh here. we move on to Gola? Yeah, I have it in S tier. I'm gonna be the dissenter here. I think Gola is the absolute best card above Stitched Horror. Gola, when it works, it really, really works. And it... So what are my predictions for the three things we'll get wrong in Dune Imperium Uprising? Number one, I think we'll get Swordmaster wrong. Um, the reasoning is that we're coming from a point that Swordmaster is a must-get and everyone is rushing to get it. So everyone is fighting tooth and nail to get it as soon as possible. Round two, round three, round four. If you don't get Sword Master, you feel like I can't win this game. So, uh, it's, and it wasn't always the case. Like you don't need Sword Master to win games of Rise of X. You don't need Sword Master to win um, base game. You you don't even need Sword Master to win immortality games. Um, but in immortality, if Sword Master feels very good, so. In Dune Imperium Uprising, because everyone's coming from a place that Swordmaster is very, very good, I expect everyone to go into um, Dune Uprising still thinking that Swordmaster is very good and and strive very hard to get it. So what happens is that in uh, Immortality, you can smuggle, smuggle. So you give up two actions to get your Swordmaster. Um, and then you get your actions back down the road. So in... Um, Dune Uprising, I think at the start, players will do this too. You'll think of like what are the easy actions, be it two or three actions for you to get Sword Master quickly. And then from there, you just navigate your game. Uh, I, I think that that is something that players will get wrong. Like how should you get Sword Master or how fast you should get Sword Master. I think it will be still one of the early important early objectives, but I don't think it will be the number one early objective. And I don't see myself, at least on this board, like rushing for Sword Master. So that's the number one thing I think that we'll get wrong. The, the number two thing that I think we'll get wrong, right, is that I think we, we will seriously get our spy placements wrong. So this is a little bit hinging on the previous point, right? If everyone thinks that Swordmaster is the first thing to get, where do your spies go? Your spies go to the Landstrike Council, right? You, they go to the one spot that prevents you from being blocked for Swordmaster. Someone gets it for eight, then you just send with a spy, you can infiltrate the space and get it for six. Um, or you can just go there unblock, right? And or you can go there first, and there's no one else can can get Soul Master that round. So I think that is something that will happen at the start. Players will value this. Players value uh, spies at the at the worm spots and at, and at the siege harbor spot. So I think that these are where the spies will initially go. That players are going for. Uh, what I think players will realize that. Um, there are other users for spies that are not as clear now. So there are a lot of cards that I think will be very powerful that have spy access on them. Uh, and if you think about cards that you want to play, right? Whenever you want to play a card, you want to play a card with with uh, city access, with with uh, spies access, or do you want to have uh, let's check console access so like green blue or or yellow access. Is that something you want? Or do you want a card that has um, Faction access, right? Do you want to play a powerful card that has faction access or do you want to play a powerful card that has green, yellow or blue access? So, 
So if you think about it, I think the answer should be clearly to you want a card with good faction access. And if you have a card with spy access, where do you want to go? You want to go to faction spaces. So doesn't that mean you want your spies to be at faction spaces? So that's something that I think will happen uh, quickly. I think players will realize that, hey, spies should go to faction spaces. Um, yeah, I think infiltrating in a faction space to defend an alliance also sounds pretty good. Um, so that's the number two thing that I think players will get wrong, like spy placement. The number three thing that I think players will get wrong in Dune Imperium Uprising, right, is that players will have forgotten how to play the game without Atomics, right, and without uh, Helena in the game. So, so two, two facets then. So once is, one is that we have played a uh, base game and we have played uh, Rise of X with Helena in the in the game so what helena does to the game right is that when there are powerful cards you play helena you reserve the card no one else gets a powerful card or even if you if you get a, an opening hand that has, has ability to buy a powerful card but there's a helena in the game you don't strive to buy the powerful card because um there's a 50 50 helena has a ring and she just reserves it and then whatever investment you have is uh, flushed down the drain so the other thing about it is that, um, yeah, players are very used to Atomics now. You get to 4 or 5 Persuasion, then you just nuke the row and just buy whatever you think is good. Some good habits or some bad habits that just come out, right, is that people don't plan for their buys, they just buy what is best and they hope for the best, right? But I, I do think that players um, will have forgotten this aspect of the game. We have forgotten this aspect of the game. You know, if there's a card that costs five or six that's in the Imperium row, if I put in a bit of effort, I can buy these cards, and that no one else can buy these cards, right? So I think that players will undervalue these spots early in, early in the Dun Imperium uprising, and that players will just um, have a happy-go-lucky uh, feel with regards to like. Uh, buying cards, they'll just say like, okay, I drew a hand with one convincing a reconnaissance and a dagger and two other cards which I wanted to play and I'll just play these two cards and I'll just have three positions to buy um, and that is how I think they'll approach it I'll just try to get uh, my maker hooks or I'll try to get like um, Sword of Master um, instead of concentrating on deck building and I think that this is something that players will take some time to get used to again so these are my three predictions in, in Dune Imperium Uprising and um, the three things that I think that we got wrong in Dune Immortality. So I'm sure that we will have a lot of things to learn about in uh, Dune Imperium Uprising and I can't wait for it. Uh, I'm so excited and hope you are too. So do put in, your com put in the comments about some things you think that I forgot in Immortality and some of the things that you think that, that will be different in Uprising. Uh, and thanks for watching this video. See you around. And I actually had Count Ilban as the worst leader in the game below Memnon.